Show us. I want everyone to see what you do to me. I want you to have the largest platform in the world so people can see what people like you do and what you think you have the power to do. There has been a rabbi, uh, Rabbi Shmuley, okay? I mean, I hope that's how he pronounces his name. So I'll share some of the clips. Uh, he got into it with Candice, okay? And as you know, uh, right now, <laughs> there's a lot of drama that's going on. But this is what Candice shared prior to her, um, her departure from Daily Wire, okay? So, I mean, she was under contract. Nobody's not saying anything. But we have Ben Shapiro. Uh, ben Shapiro is talking. He said something, so we have a video for you guys. That's where you can hear what Ben Shapiro is saying or not saying, okay? Rabbi Shmuley, woo, things are really heating up. Let me just bring you guys forward on everything that has transpired. So way back when everything was going down with Kanye West two years ago, obviously two years ago, very long time ago, uh, relative to just the political moment, um, I declined to publicly insult my friend. Some people were offended by that. I understand the offense. I also hope that some people respect that when you have a real relationship somewhere, you don't turn those individuals into a headline uh, because there's peer pressure to do so. Regardless, Kanye West notoriously tweets, that he had an inside track. I knew that he was being threatened behind the scenes by somebody that was close to him, a Jewish person by the name of Harley Pasternak. And that was a part of the reason that he was so upset. So I did a show the day after Kanye tweeted that, before he did any interviews, the day after just the tweet existed. And I asked people essentially to just give him some time. I said, I don't think he is going to blow up Israel. Let's all just calm down and give him some time to explain what's going on. And since that very moment, a man by the name of Rabbi Shmuley and his hag daughter have been harassing me. They have made videos after videos, smearing me, libeling me as an anti-Semite, saying that I defend Hitler, that I defend, just an absolute nonsense. I want to be clear, it's been going on for two years. They watch every minute of the show, take me out of context, and essentially are trying to create hatred between me and the Jewish community, which is never going to happen. It's, I'm telling you, it's just never going to happen. I have too many Jewish friends. I love Jewish people. They're part of my story so much in the things that they have done for me since I was a child. You know, I've, I've shared that with you. We don't need to recap that. It's just, it's never going to work, but he won't stop. The threats don't stop. And I showed you guys, uh, basically, just a small snippet, really just a minute of their harassment over the last two years. And some of you guys were very stunned and shocked, and I'm finally defending myself, and I feel good about it. Like, I'm not pregnant anymore. I'm like, let's go. Like, let's go, Rabbi Shmuley. So he sees me defending myself, and he's now doubling down. He's getting crazier, crazier in his threats against me. This is unbelievable. The Jerusalem Post, which, by the way, I actually really like that publication because they do a very good job of just telling you what happened. There's no twist on it. They're telling you, basically, here's the headline, Can Candace Owens and Rabbi Shmuley squabble over anti-Semitism, blackmail, and Kanye West. And they do a very good job in this article of just uh, giving you the play-by-play -play of what has happened since the very beginning. But Bergen to this article, I could not believe this. Like, they reached out to him for a comment, and he actually said this, quote, there can be no question that Candace's serious defamation against me and the Jewish community must be met with a comprehensive lawsuit that will bankrupt her. Bankrupt her. He wants to bankrupt me for defending myself against him and his hag daughter, right? Why do I call him an unholy rabbi? Because who does that? It's one thing to say, like, I want to sue somebody. It's another thing to say that I want to bankrupt that person. He constantly makes these sorts of financial threats. And why should we talk about that? Because if I or somebody else said, oh, you know, Jewish people always try to come after people in the means of money, it would be referred to as an anti-Semitic trope. Well, what is he doing right here if not engaging or creating that very trope by saying that he wants to bankrupt somebody? Why? Oh, because like she's defending herself. Like she doesn't have a right to defend herself. I can go after her and smear her and libel her for two years straight and she better not say anything. Listen, uh, Rabbi, I don't know what thug life you think you're a part of, but I want to be very clear that I am definitely an uppity black person. I say that obviously as a nod to uh, Clarence Thomas when he was testifying and saying that if there's a black person who ordains to think for themselves, these people are deemed uppity. And I want you to know, Rabbi Shmuley, that I am indeed an uppity black, okay? I am not taking kindly to your threats. So let's just get to the bottom of them. What's next? What's next? I don't, I don't fear you, okay? So you want to bankrupt me for defending myself? Is that what you said, by the way? Is, are those one of the reasons that Michael Jackson put you on a list of individuals that he felt were threatening his life? Were you threatening to bankrupt him? Why don't you answer the questions? I don't fear you whatsoever. So what's next? You've already libeled. You've already smeared. Now you're threatening to bankrupt. What are you going to do next? Are you going to kill me? Are you going to kill me because I refuse to kowtow to you because I'm not fearful of you? And I think it's weird that you and your daughter are promoting and selling sex toys. That's why I deem you an unholy rabbi. 
because the industrialization of sex is harmful to our society everywhere. I don't care if you call it kosher sex. You're selling butt plugs on the internet. You gross me out. You disgust me. I am a better person than you, and I do not fear you. Because as I said, you don't have the ability or the strength to fracture the relationships between me and the Jewish community. You just, you don't have that power. So what? Show us. I want everyone to see what you do to me. I want you to have the largest platform in the world so people can see what people like you do and what you think you have the power to do. It's a go talking about, you know, just redeeming sex in marriage and then the daughter now promotes it. Apparently, the daughter has a shop, an adult shop. But be that as it may, even within the Jewish community, this rabbi is, <laughs> people are also, they have a distance. Okay, he likes to put himself, um, you know, make videos, things of that nature. But notice what kind of said, right? Uh, according to her, people wanted her to uh, talk about the headlines about Kanye West, right? And she refused to do that because her and Kanye West are friends. But my question to how many times has Candice talked about Kim Kardashian on her on her program on her show? even when Kanye was still married to Kim Kardashian. So whatever you think about uh, Kim Kardashian, if Kanye West is your friend, why are you talking about his wife? I don't think my friends will be talking about my husband, let alone publicly on the platform. So now, like, you know, Kanye West did the issue, um, the, the death con, or how he got in trouble with the Jewish community. Now, just like, okay, people are expecting you to comment on something. All of a sudden, I don't want to comment anything. Why? Because Kanye West is my friend. Oh, yeah, they're definitely friends. But to me, I'm like, okay, if he's your friend, why are you so comfortable to be talking about his wife like that? So i just like, okay, you know, these are the, the I, I don't know how they handle relationship, the friendships in Hollywood with Candace Owens, where she described him as being unholy for running a kosher sex shop with his daughter. Candace Owens, I don't take anything she says seriously. She'll say anything for attention. She knows nothing about Judaism, and she knows nothing about sex, clearly. In Judaism, sex is the holiest act that two people can engage in, especially within the confines of marriage, and that's what we set out to do with kosher sex. This was a book that my dad wrote 25 years ago, and he wrote it to enhance marriage and to make it exciting and to use Jewish wisdom to keep couples connected. And I took those ideas 25 years later because sex had only taken more of a hit. Like my dad said, endless porn addiction, infidelity. People have lost the ability to connect. Metal. I don't think this is up and up, but according to them, within their tradition, within their culture, it's fine. So, you know, there's certain things that we do, like in my culture, some of you guys, you think like, oh, wow, you know, like, why would you do that? You see what I'm saying? Like, you know, how um, I think like the Chinese, the bow, you know what I'm saying? That's what they have like in their culture. We don't have it over here, okay? In my culture, you kneel. Okay, over here, you'll be like, why, why are you kneeling? Okay, remember when the Duchess of Saxes was having problems, why should you be catering for, you know, for your grandmother, like the queen, things of that nature. So there are certain things that I do, uh, that are in play here, that have to do with cultural, uh, with cultural things, so be that is me. But Rabbi Shmuri is also a very controversial figure. Apparently, he also threatened uh, Michael Jackson, according to Candace Owens. So I'm like, okay, so if somebody has the audacity to threaten uh, Michael Jackson, <laughs> I'm like, oh boy. Yeah. So uh, what else has taken place? So as you already know, that Candace Owens has found herself in this situation. Now the most thing that's trending right now is Crisis King. But we, we, before we go there, Ben Shapiro was asked the question as to why was Candace fired. So Ben Shapiro has responded, okay? So here is the conversation that Ben Shapiro, uh, this is how he responded. You and your company have been at the centre of a very uh, high profile one at the moment with Candace Owens, who's now left Daily Wire. Um, was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? I'm not going to speak to this topic, Pierce. At, at all? At all. You can't give me any uh, insight into why she departed? No hints, no nothing. I'm not going to speak to this. C can, I ask, can I ask why? I mean, you can ask. No, no, I'm not, you can ask why you don't want to say anything. Um, again, you can ask. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean I only, I'm only curious because I know what a, a staunch defender of free speech you are, and it would surprise me if it had been someone's opinions that would make you want to part company with them however I mean, suffice it to say the only thing i will say is what i've said all along with regard to candace or with regard to any of our other hosts i am not in hiring and firing position with the daily wire i'm a co-founder of the daily wire i'm a co-owner of the daily wire i'm not actually in management 
Jeremy Boring and Caleb Robinson are in management positions with regard to Candace or anyone else. And as far as the free speech situation, what I will say is that no company has the obligation to literally pay anyone. The, the Daily Wire is a, is a publisher. It is not a platform. I've never called for Candace or anyone else for that matter to be banned from YouTube, to be banned from X, to be banned from any platform. That's a different story, obviously, when it comes to any publisher. Any publisher gets to make decisions about what it wishes to uh, what it wishes to purvey and not. I mean, it's, I'm not going to labour this, but one more point I would make is it's been reported extensively that the reason for her departure was because uh, her comments have been perceived by people at the Daily Wire as anti-Semitic. Again, I'm, I'm not going to comment on this, Pierce. OK. Rabbi Shmuley, would you comment on him? Because Jeremy has actually commented on Rabbi Shmuley. So I've avoided commenting publicly on Rabbi Shmuley because as far as I can tell, the man is an attention whore of the highest order. Is that the general position of the company on Mr. Shmuley? I mean, that, that, that's my personal position for sure. I mean, I, I think that, you know, Rabbi Shmuley happens to be a person with whom I agree on some matters related to, say, Middle East policy. And uh, I, I also believe that his devotion to camera and notoriety have made him do some untethered things in, in recent days. I mean, there's a clip, I'm just going to play it, and you can comment or otherwise, but it was extraordinary to me. We've had him on this show a few times, but I found this really quite extraordinary. Let's take a look. Purim is a day of celebration. We feel bad for Candace Owens that she lost her job. So I figure, with her image of what Jews are supposed to look like, why not val at least validate her? I am dressed up as a Candace Owens Jew. Now, this is not a Christian child, this is a Jewish child. But if it would be, I got my Christian blood. Mmm, spicy, delicious. I got my Jewish nose. I have filth, because Jews are all filth. And more than anything else, what does Andy have? Money! I mean, what is your reaction to that, to that clip? I mean, the phrase in Hebrew is that's what we would call a chilo Hashem, right? It's a, de it's a desecration of God's name. And that sort of behavior is, is disgusting in any context. Uh, and uh, frankly, I don't know an Orthodox Jew who feels differently about that, not one. Do you think he should be given airtime anymore, Rabbi Shmuley? I mean, I'm not going to make decisions about who should air him and, and who should not. Uh, what I will say is that the, that, that sort of behavior is untethered from reality and, and makes a mockery of uh, much of the uh, the mission for, for people like me, which includes fighting anti-Semitism. Yeah, but I get a lot of people, actually, after his most recent appearance here, just saying, this guy does not speak for most Jewish people like me. And they, they write in their droves, and they say, please stop having someone on the... Well, I mean, that, I mean what he's like doing a, there certainly doesn't speak for literally any Jew that, I can, that I've heard of right. or know. I mean, I can't speak to his positions on Israel again. You know, my positions on Israel speak for my positions on Israel, but that's a different story from dressing up in a Sturmer costume uh, to, to mock anti-Semitism. I think that that's quite you know, counterproductive and and especially given the, the online discourse, pretty, pretty negative in, in pretty much every way I can think of. Yeah. All right. So we're just going to leave it there because that was uh, Ben Shapiro speaking to um, Piers Morgan. And as you can see, he's not going to disclose. But one thing that he also shared, he did share that he, uh, Jeremy, is the one who is responsible um, with management and another guy. Ben Shapiro, he's a co-owner for sure, but he does not make a decision on hiring or firing. But he did say, like, which company is going to have, um, he, he did say, like, you know, they're a platform, not, um, I forgot exactly the phrase that he used, right? But what he said is just like, okay, which platform is going to entertain Candice's behavior? You see what I'm saying? Just because people want to hide behind whatever free speech, things of that nature. But he did not want to disclose anything because I guess, you know what I mean, this might affect um, contract issues. So he decided not to uh, to disclose any more information. So that that's what happened. That was Rabbi Shmuri now uh, clapping back, I guess making funny at Candice Owen because Candice Owen had, you know, they've been going at each other for quite some time, okay? They say, like, you know, these people drink blood, things of that nature. So that's how this and other things that has landed Candice to be accused of uh, anti Semitism. And it did not even help matters worse because you have uh, Nick Frentis. Candice doesn't even know who Nick Frentis is, but Nick Frentis is clapping for Candice, is celebrating this issue. And Nick Frentis and Ben Shapiro, they are arch enemies. So you can see, just like, okay, your enemy's friend <laughs> is your friend. That's what's uh, happening in a public square, which is very unfortunate.